I spend a lot of time looking for unusual devices that I can demonstrate to you in these videos, but during the course of searching for those, on occasion I'll uncover a rare or unusual audio recording. So I've collected a few of those here today and I'm going to talk about them. They've all got a bit of a story attached. So we've got some airline memorabilia. We've got a tiny tape containing a recording that shouldn't really exist. And then we've got a new release on a long dead format. So let's get on with it. So the first tape I'm going to show you is this rather tatty looking reel to reel. It's a four track three and three quarter inch per second stereo recording, which goes by the catchy name of popular program number 31. And on the front of the box, it proclaims that it's exactly as heard on American Airlines Astrovision. And the tape contains three hours worth of music, which is about the maximum that you can fit on a seven inch reel that's running at this speed. You can see here the tape really runs up to the edges of the reel. If we compare that to a typical album of the era, we've got 10 tracks on this one running at the same speed and that's how much tape that one needs. So what's the story behind this tape and how did American Airlines find themselves in the position of releasing music on tape? Well, this particular tape dates from 1966. That's just a year and a half or so after American Airlines introduced Astrovision. This was their new in-flight entertainment system. These black and white monitors were nine inches across and were placed between each seat on the first class section of the plane. Passengers had the choice of watching the video program that was being played on those screens from an open reel videotape player or they could listen to two different music programs. Whilst looking for more information about Astrovision, I stumbled across this issue of Life from 1965, and in there, amongst the advertisements for some rather impressive looking automobiles of the time, and of course the latest colour television, and the TV dinner to go with it, there was an article by Alan Levy all about the Astrovision system. And one interesting tidbit that I picked up from this article was that there was a version of this system that could pick up live broadcasts. If a plane was flying from Los Angeles to New York, they could pick up the broadcast from ground-based antennas as long as they remember to change the frequency every 10 to 15 minutes. But the reason I mention this is because it explains how the system worked. To choose what you wanted to listen to, there were three different jacks you could plug your headset into. There was the TV audio, and then there was Stereo 1 and Stereo 2, which both provided separate three-hour music programs. And that's exactly what's on this tape. It's one of those two stereo music programs that would have been used around 1966. And it's not a reproduction of it. It's one of the tapes that would have been produced at the time by Ampex. Some of them would find their way to the planes and then other ones would find their way to retail. So as to where you would have bought one of these at the time, I'm not entirely sure, perhaps at the airport or maybe even on the plane itself. It's a very eclectic mix. You certainly get a lot of music for your money and it's very well recorded for a three and three quarter inch per second tape. <laughs> Ironically, this easy listening tape isn't particularly easy to listen to because of the variety of genres and artists featured on it. And it probably isn't all that rare either. I have seen quite a few versions for sale over the years on eBay, but it just takes you back to a different era when a new van in the US would look like this, when smoking was encouraged, when pizza came as a mix, and when a washing machine brand was advertised as being dependable because it only broke down three times in nine years. And when flying was something that you wanted to keep a reminder of, rather than a horrible nightmare that was best forgotten. Now, whilst the previous tape might not have been all that rare, but it did have an interesting story that went with it, this one is completely the opposite. This one could be unique, but I don't really have much I can say about it. It regards this format here. This is a Sony NT cassette, the smallest cassette ever made. When I did a video on that one about three years ago, quite a few people said, well, I've got those kind of cassettes in my answering machine. They're nothing special. Well, no, these are answering machine cassettes. This is a Philips mini cassette. 
that's an Olympus micro cassette. The micro cassette is the smaller of the two by just a fraction. Now compare that to the NT tape and you can see how much smaller this is. And unlike those analog cassettes, this one is a digital tape. It's a variant of the DAT format. If we bring in a normal size cassette, you can see really how incredibly tidy this thing is. And it holds 120 minutes of audio as well. And there were only ever two devices sold that used the NT tapes, the Sony NT1 and NT2, which you see here. These were both marketed as dictation type recorders. However, the NT cassettes could actually reproduce music surprisingly well. Unfortunately, despite this impressive music performance, history records that there were never any pre-recorded music titles for the Sony NT format. Well, you're about to witness history being rewritten right here because I have a pre-recorded NT cassette. Now, admittedly, this is not something that would have been sold in the stores. As you can see, it was for demonstration only, not for sale. It's the Poetic Justice soundtrack, and they're using the standard cassette box here. But if I open this up, you can see inside here is the Sony NT cassette. Now, back when I made my video about the NT format, I did speculate that in my opinion, I didn't think Sony had just intended this to become a dictation format. After all, the audio specifications were way beyond what was required for something that just performed that function. And in addition, those handheld recorders had stereo headphones with an inline remote control and a mega bass button. So this demonstration tape has been put together to show off the music playback capabilities of the NT format, but for what ends, I couldn't tell you. Perhaps it's just a dealer demonstration tape, or maybe it even made its way around various music executives in an attempt to get them on board in releasing music on NT tape. Unable to breathe through the chronic cloud that somehow prevents me from installing fresh... So whilst I can't tell you why this was produced and whether or not it's even unique, one thing I can say with certainty is that this is the smallest pre-recorded music cassette ever made. Now you might have noticed at the start of the video that over my left shoulder is a rack of cassettes and they're not any old cassettes. The vast majority of these, apart from the bottom two rows, are digital compact cassettes, DCCs. And I've collected some titles on DCC that I wouldn't really have bought in any other format, but there's just something about DCCs that attracts me. There's the rounded case design, there's the way the tape pops out of the top. There's just a really nice package. I mean, they sound great as well, no problem with that, but it's just, they're very collectible. There's just something about the way they're put together with the artwork behind that cover there, how you get the little booklet in the back that slides out neatly. Just a very attractive object. Over the years, I've collected quite a few unusual DCCs. This isn't one of them, Purple Rain. That's quite a normal title. But the next one is a little bit more unusual. It's a compilation tape, and it's entitled A Merry Christmas and a Happy 1996. The important thing for me, though, is that it says not for sale, which, of course, immediately means I have to buy it. Now, the titles that are on here are a mix of 10 pop songs, and then six classical recordings, which is a bit of an unusual mix. But along the bottom here, you can see the important section. The cover of this DCC is dedicated to our artists and labels who deserve our thanks for their repertoire approval, which has enabled us to produce this Christmas DCC for years now. And on the front cover, you can see inside the stars on the Christmas tree are the various artist labels that are involved in this cassette. So this is something that was given away to various members of staff that were involved in the production of DCCs. You can see more in the back here where it says, PMDC and support, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, management wishes you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for all your flexibility, understanding and the excellent performance in 1995. Now this would have been a bit bittersweet because DCC was really struggling at this point. It was on its last legs and the last few titles were released on the format in 1996 and there were just a handful of those. So this probably would have been the last Christmas DCC that those members of staff received. 
it's believed that this was the last title to come out on the DCC format in 1996. And that was the case up until about a month or so ago when the first new title in 21 years was released on the format and it's this one here jeremy hyden blue wicked i'll be honest i've got no idea who this guy is however the people behind it the dcc museum got in touch with me to tell me that this title was coming out so of course i had to immediately order it to add to the collection if you're interested you can order one yourself from the links at the bottom of the page now, of course, once the DCC Museum had got in touch with me, I then had a contact, Ralph, who I could ask about the cassette that I showed you before, and he hadn't heard of that one either, so they can add that one onto their database. Perhaps it is particularly rare. Now, this one looks every bit the same as a professional release. And you'll notice inside here, it's not only released on DCC, this is also out on mini disc as well as cassette, CD, vinyl, and digital. So it's really covered every base there. I think it's quite a neat idea bringing it out on all different formats. It's got a lot of stuff in here that takes you back to the days of DCC, a thing explaining how the format works. And in this bit, there's a bit of a story about how they managed to produce this DCC after all these years. And apparently it was all made possible through the help of the DCC Museum and Ralph, who goes by the name of Dr. DCC. If you look on his website, you'll find all the information about DCC, the different equipment that was released. And he used some of this equipment to produce this release. He used modified DCC 175s. That's the portable device. And the reason you'd use this one is because it was the only model sold that could be connected up to a PC using a special cable. And once you did that, you could transfer the files across and most importantly, add the title data onto each track. Now, my machine is in a very sorry state. All the emblems are missing off the buttons because they were originally written on top of a rubberized coating which perished and turned to a horrible sticky gluey mess which had to be removed a lot of 90s equipment used that kind of coating also the batteries never worked in this one and apparently dr dcc can repair this machine by replacing those parts and providing me with a new battery so i might well take him up on that offer but meanwhile back to the first new dcc release in 21 years and to all intents and purposes it functions just the same as any normal dcc cassette you could have bought in the shops back in the 1990s track data will appear on fourth or fifth generation players so there we go that was the last of the three formats i wanted to show you here today in this video we started off with an open reel tape which would be bought as a reminder of a trip taken on an airplane we moved on to the tiny sony nt cassette which contained a pre-recorded album for reasons unknown and then finished off with a couple of dcc's including the first new release on the format in 21 years Right, I hope you've enjoyed this one, and if you have, hopefully I'll manage to put another one of these together sometime in the future when I've collected enough unusual recordings. But I'm going to end this one on a bit of a request. It comes from the people behind this DCC, the DCC Museum. They need your help in collating a list of all the known DCC releases. You'll remember earlier on when I mentioned this one to them, they hadn't heard of this one, and they're going to add that to the list. And they need your help in giving them titles of any rare or unusual releases that you you might have that they don't know about they do maintain a list on their website i'll put the web address along the bottom here so if you go on there have a look through that list if you have a title that they don't know about they want you to email in with the details but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching <laughs>